Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to talk about five mistakes that interior designers make when creating floor plans in SketchUp. This is going to be part one, okay? Now, it is very common for SketchUp newbies to make all of the mishaps and all of the little errors that I'm going to outline in this series of videos, okay? So there's going to be more than one part, obviously. And it's all very normal. It's all part of the learning process. And I just thought it was important that I point these out to you to help you create accurate, precise, and professional floor plans, okay? So let's just start right now. You can see the first mistake. And that is having your floor plan visible like this when someone else opens up the file or when you open the file again, okay? So it, what I always say an awful lot of is when interior designers are sending me their SketchUp files when they need help, usually when they're taking my courses, and I open the file and boom, I'm hit up the face with a, you know a zoomed in floor plan I have no idea of uh, the scale of the entire floor plan or, you know, perspective, because this is what I'm looking at. And I teach in my courses good practice and efficient workflow so that you don't do this, okay? The other thing that is really important that I want to point out is that it's just not very professional, especially when you're sending your SketchUp files to your colleagues, if you work in a design team, to tradesmen, to architects, for someone else to open your file and to see this, it's not good, guys. It's poor form, okay? And the best way to stop that is to select Zoom Extents. And what Zoom Extents does is it centers your floor plan and it maximizes it to the full size of the screen. I mean, isn't this so much more organized and just pleasant and what I also recommend just to add another layer of efficiency to this is to put this on a scene so I'm going to select the scenes tray I'm going to click on the little cross here and create a scene you can change the name of that if you wish and what that means is that if, if I zoom into this floor plan to do whatever it is I'm doing and I click that scene tab, it brings me right back out again to that last saved scene. Okay? I mean, this is just so much more efficient. Now, the second thing that I'm going to talk about is the black walls. And I see this a lot. And I'm not sure, like, why a lot of interior designers or interior design students do this. Because I find this to be very harsh it's a very harsh view especially when you're using a technical drawing uh you know um style which is always you know the white background i find it very glaring and i just don't find it very visually appealing and if you are going to print that it's going to use an awful lot of your black ink if you're printing at home and it's just not going to look very nice on a printed page It'll have that like shine to it, you know. Do you know what I'm talking about when you have like an awful lot of black printed? My recommendation is to use, if you want to have a different color on the walls, I recommend using gray. So I'm going to go into the materials tray and I'm just going to use this slider right here just to bring that up a few notches. And isn't that so much more delicate and aesthetically pleasing to look at. Now, the second reason it's so important not to use black is that the black covers any other areas where you may have made errors. For example, and I've done this on purpose, you can see right here that there's an extra bit of geometry that we don't need. And I'm not able to see that if I use black for the walls. So I'm going to delete that. This is also a common uh, problem where designers would include geometry at uh, corners here where it's not required. You just let those walls flow into one another. But if you are using black for the wall, you're not going to see all of these little areas that need to be corrected. 
um, and there's another one right there so I'm just going to correct that and do we have any others let's take a look yes there's one up here let's remove that and I'm only able to see this because I'm using a lighter color uh, for the walls and generally speaking I have to be honest I generally don't use any color for a technical floor plan I just keep it white anyway so I'm going to select my scene tab it's going to bring us back out again And what you should be able to see right now is there sh you should be able to see jagged edges on some of the lines, on some of the lines of the floor plan. So for example, uh, so this is number three. I'm going to zoom in to let you see this. So right here, you can see a little bit of a jagged edge right there. And it continues on all the way along here. And it's actually throughout the entire floor plan and there's usually two reasons why that happens one is that you have created a line that isn't straight so you haven't been using the proper axis so if I'm going to be drawing a line horizontally right here then I have to make sure I see the red axis all the time okay uh, and the other reason why you would see a jagged edge is that you have changed the orientation of the axes, okay? So let's select our scene tab to take us right back out again. And if we just zoom on out further, you can see our axes. And there's actually another little mistake here that I'm going to point out in a minute after we finish talking about this. When you create a 2D floor plan in SketchUp, you must select the proper camera settings. And the camera settings are top and parallel projection. And when you select top and parallel projection, you should only see the green axis and the red axis. But you can actually see the blue axis here. And the reason that has happened is because you have accidentally selected the orbit tool and you've moved the camera around a little and it has taken it out of parallel projection okay the quickest way to correct that is to go into camera hover over standard views and select top you can instantly see if I just pan up that the blue axis has disappeared because we're now properly in a bird's eye 2d view here's our lovely green axis here's our lovely red axis and if I select the scene tab and just come out again, you can see that that previous camera setting actually comes back into play again, okay? So it's very important that if you select zoom extents and then camera, hover over standard views and select top, that you, you right click that scene and you select update so that that little change to the camera settings is saved. Okay, if we zoom out, there you go. You can see that the settings, the axis has been realigned again so that it's correct. If we select our scene tab, you can see that we're going back into that again. Okay, and everything is the way it should be. And you should be able to tell very quickly that all of the edges no longer have jagged lines. Okay, so what's just to clarify this. I see interior designers either not aware that there's jagged lines or not addressing jagged lines. Jagged lines should never be seen in a floor plan or an elevation that's supposed to be 2D. They should never be seen unless you're drawing a line that's diagonal on purpose. But if you're drawing lines that are supposed to be plumb and true, and that are supposed to be straight vertically and horizontally, you should never see jagged edges. And as I said previously, there's usually two reasons that that has happened. One is that uh, the line isn't straight, or two, you have used the orbit tool and you have taken the camera settings out of top view, 
and um, it has caused the floor plan to sit a little skewed on the axis, okay? Now, what I want to talk about is the fourth mistake that I see interior designers make, and that is not starting to construct their floor plans or elevations or even their 3D models at the origin. So if we come out a little bit, you will see that this floor plan is floating in space at the minute. And that's just not good practice. It's good practice to have all of your geometry at the origin. The origin is right here. So you can see that if I click on my line tool and hover at the corner here where the green and the red axis meet, you'll see a little label that says origin, okay? That's where you're supposed to start your geometry. So I'm going to highlight all of the floor plan. I'm going to click on the move tool. I'm going to hover over the bottom left hand corner until I see that little label that says end point. I'm going to click and drag and bring it all the way over to the origin. You might need to move it around a little there to find it. You might even need to zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit easier. The minute you feel the floor plan snap, and the minute you see the label origin, let's just move that around again until I can get that. There we go. Just click and then click your select tool and then click anywhere in the white area um, to, you know, um, end that action. We're going to have to select zoom extents again because we've moved the position of the floor plan and then we're going to have to update our scene. Okay, and now again, this is sitting perfectly. This is exactly how your floor plan should look the minute you open it. You should be able to see the green axis right here, the red axis right here. You should be able to see the entire floor plan. It should be centered and it should be maximized to the full size of your screen. This, guys, is perfection. It is a nicely presented and professional looking floor plan, okay? The last mistake that I see interior designers or interior design students make is using the wrong style. And that also includes allowing the back side of the faces to show through. And I'm just going to show you what I mean. I will see this an awful lot on Instagram and Facebook. So I will see floor plans or even 3D models that show these blue faces and sometimes there will also be white faces. In SketchUp, every face has a front and back. The front is white and the back is blue by default, okay? And it's good practice to always have the front of the faces visible and showing, okay? So when you're creating a floor plan or an elevation or a 3D model and you haven't applied color or texture yet, it should be black and white. You should never be showing the blue faces because it just isn't professional looking, okay? And in my courses, I recommend that when you're creating technical black and white floor plans, that the style you should be using is hidden line. If you select hidden line, you don't have to worry about the blue faces and reversing faces and all of that. You just click one button or one setting and it instantly makes your entire floor plan black and white. This is how it should look. You should never be allowing anyone to see blue faces because you always want to be aware of how you are projecting your professionalism, your brand, your business, and your competency when it comes to creating floor plans. And you just want to make sure that it, it looks, you know, as good as you can make it. And in this um, scene right here, obviously the style is shaded with textures, or you could just use shaded um, because I have grey included in the walls. Again, if I didn't want to have any color at all and just wanted a nice crisp black and white floor plan, I would select hidden line and as simple as that, it, it's automatically changed and updated, okay? 
I hope you found this video useful and please let me know in the comments if you have been doing the things that I've mentioned in the video or if there are areas where you would like some tips and advice or, and, or guidance and I will create a video to help you with that. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks when it comes to SketchUp for interior design.